Well, welcome back to the weekly rotation. We are back on schedule. This will be coming out on Sunday morning, as it usually does. I know this is pretty close together, considering the previous week came out four days ago. Uh, travel kind of made it happen that way, but I digress. So this particular week, went back to the well with a particular fragrance that's being featured again this week, and uh, a couple newer fragrances that I just recently got, some stuff I've reached back for that I haven't worn in a long time, just some good overall variety, but predominantly really fresh stuff. It's been pretty warm over here, even though I got mild for a little bit, it's been kind of warmer weather to really pull off a lot of great fresh stuff, and it's week number 146 in the weekly rotation, so stay tuned. <laughs> Starting off on Sunday, this was the fragrance that I went back to the well with. Uh, this was all over the place in the last rotation. Bulgari Man Glacial Essence. You may think that because I've been wearing this so much, I think it's amazing. I don't think it's amazing. I think it's very good. It's just so easy to go to. When you don't want to think about it, you don't want to strategize a particular fragrance or I'm in the mood for something spicy today or I want to grab a tobacco fragrance. None of that. You're just like, fresh and clean. Let's roll. Here you go. This is fresh and clean with pretty solid performance. It does have a little bit of a soapy smell to it, but not heavily. It's very airy, aromatic, a little soapy, fresh, clean. And it's got this interesting clear wood note that provides this soft woody feel in the dry down. It's a little clean and musky. Sticks to my skin for a pretty long time without being a really loud fragrance. It's just it's hyper versatile. I love stuff like that. So it's been easy to just keep going back to. I will get a full review out on this one sooner rather than later, but actually out the shower, I rolled with this one as well. So all day long on Sunday was Bulgari Man Glacial Essence. Moving into Monday. So this is one that I had brought with me on my trip that I was really in the mood to wear. I had not been wearing it. I started talking about it recently. It's become my favorite Yuzu fragrance. It is Gentleman's Nod Musashi. Those of you that have not tried this one yet, you're missing out if you like Yuzu because it's a very long lasting Yuzu fragrance. It's, I want to say 27%, just like the new release. And you get a lot of fresh green herbal tea smell to this. It's aromatic, it's a little juicy and citrusy at the top. Uh, the yuzu is gonna be the most dominant note here that does stay for pretty much the duration of the fragrance. And this one lasts all day. I've actually been very impressed with this one. This is the one to beat from Gentleman's Nod for me. I do have the newest one, I've only wore it one time. We'll discuss it here in a few segments. But this is really good stuff. This is absolutely sample worthy. You can get carded samples from Gentleman's Nod and you can save 10%. There's a link down in my link tree. This is the one. Until further notice, this is definitely the one from them. If you like Yuzu, there's no reason not to try it. If you're not a fan of Yuzu, you'll probably hate this one, but it was nice to go back to it. It's been a little while since I wore it. Really, really good stuff. Ended up wearing it all day. I resprayed three more sprays when I got out the shower. So all day long, went with the gentleman's nod, Musashi. Moving into Tuesday, this was travel day back home. Uh, this scent profile has kind of become my go-to on travel day. This is the Eau de Parfum version of Raja Parfum's Oligarch. So my last bit of travels, I was rolling with the Parfum as my travel day fragrance for most, most of the days. As far as like when I went to Chicago last, uh, this was to and from. I wore this going and coming. I just love this stuff. I do prefer the Parfum ever so slightly, but if you can get your hands on either one, they're both great, they both last longer. This is a little bit more bright and fresh in the top. You get a little bit more dense and sweet citrus with the Parfum. I do like that a little bit more about it, but this is very bright, fresh. It's captive. This will grab people when they smell it. It's got a beautiful sillage that kind of hangs around for a good while. Even though it's not a full-on Parfum, it still has a pretty l decent lingering sillage, and it's just oh, such a good scent profile. The greens tend to stick out. The little bit of greens that's in here sticks out a bit more for me in the Eau de Parfum versus the Parfum Flanker. But like I said, if you can get either one or get a decant or a sample of either, 
they're great. They're super versatile. They're easy to enjoy. High quality, great blend. Performance is good. I really dig this. Oligarch's becoming my starting to become my favorite scent profile. It's at least been my most worn this year. Scent profile from Rose Parfums during the day. Oligarch Eau de Parfum. Then we got out the shower. I have not worn this one in a while. It's the newest summer flanker in the Eternity line. This is CK Eternity Summer Days. The 2022 summer flanker in the Calvin Klein Eternity line. This is nothing special. I have to say, I wouldn't advise going rush out and get this. It's decent. It's kind of got this salty, melon, watery, aquatic smell. A little musky. And it fades. It's not a strong performer. This is like a three to four hour fragrance on my skin. It's on the generic synthetic side. It is. I have no problem admitting that. I paid 40 from Nordstrom Rack. I still think that's a little too much for this one. If you can find it sub $30, I think it's worth rolling the dice on if you just you like a lot of the Calvin Klein summer flankers, regardless of which line, whether it's the Eternity line or the CK1 summer line. Um, CK1 Summer Days is definitely the one to get from this year's two releases for the summer flankers. This one's decent. If I would have tried it first, I don't think I would have bought it for $40 uh, on a blind buy. I'm fine with it. I'll spray it for different things, mostly out the shower. This will be hot summer's day running errands. This will be a good, really good gym fragrance for me. I like to, you know, put stuff like this in and out of my gym rotation. So I have uses for it. I will wear it. I just feel like 40 bucks was still too much for it. If you can get this in the sub $30 price point, I think it's a little bit easier to roll the dice on. Just be warned if you don't like kind of screechy synthetic fragrances. This one is a little bit of that in the first couple of minutes of the opening. Then it settles into a pretty pleasant melon aquatic type of smell. A little bit more like a salted watermelon type of smell, I guess you could say. Um, but it becomes lightly, lightly aquatic and musky after that. It doesn't really change a whole lot. It's not completely linear, but again, it's nothing special. But I did enjoy it out the shower. That's Eternity Summer Days from Calvin Klein. Moving into Wednesday, I had this waiting in my waiting for me whenever I got back. My wife had grabbed the mail, so it was a package sitting on the counter waiting for me. This is, I couldn't wait to wear it. This is the newest release from Gentleman's Nod, like I was speaking of earlier. This is called Ernest, number 85. It's one, another one of the original scents that they have shave sets for, uh, different grooming products for. So the easiest way to describe this one is it's very fruity. It's fruity fresh with a bit of earthy tobacco in the woods kind of take over in the dry down, the cedar wood especially. I get a lot of cedar wood out of this one with the tobacco in the dry down. It has kind of an abrupt transition from all of these different fruits. There's a lot of citruses and fruits in the top. It's got a pretty heavy dose of it. It's very aromatic. It's not really soapy, but it's got a little bit of that clean aromatic feel to it. I believe there is a little bit of lavender. There's tobacco in the heart. There's tobacco in the base. You will get a little hint of this kind of slightly creamy tobacco, not much of an earthy tone. It just adds a little bit of that creamy darkness in the backdrop behind, kind of a thickness to that fruity, fresh sweetness you're going to get from all these citruses and fruity notes. I don't really get the jasmine. I know there's jasmine in the heart. It's the one thing I don't really pick up at all. It, it, I'm not saying it's not there. I just don't smell it. But when you get into the dry down, moderately earthy but not dirty earthy type of tobacco. Uh, this is a darker leafed tobacco, almost like a cigar tobacco in many ways, with a lot of cedar wood, a little bit of sandalwood supporting it. Performance, again, this is a 27% oil concentration. I actually have the card right here, matter of fact. So all the cards come with them. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's classified as citrus fruity. That's interesting. Top notes are lime, mango, bergamot, lemon, and grapefruit. Hearts, jasmine, tobacco, and lavender. Bases, tobacco, vetiver, cedarwood, sandalwood. So yeah, I get pretty much, I like the vetiver just adds to the woody smell, but I don't smell any lavender, I mean uh, jasmine. And that mango is probably what gives it that fruitiness because everything else is pretty much just citruses, lime, bergamot, grapefruit, and lemon. But that mango really jumps out. It's a fruity tobacco smell. It's actually very, very nice. I don't quite want to put it on a pedestal above Musashi. I do like Musashi a little bit more. Like I said, that's the one to beat. But this is sample worthy if you want something different that doesn't smell like all the other tobacco fragrances. This is a fruity, fresh, citrus dominant tobacco and wood fragrance. It's, it's fall ready, cool weather ready with the density, with the scent profile, with the performance, but still has that touch of freshness to kind of keep you in that summer vibe. But 
so fall and winter appropriate. I hope that made sense. I was trying to make sense of it for you guys, but I've been enjoying it so far. One wearing down with Gentleman's Nod Ernest 85. And then we got the shower. Just recently got this one sent to me by my buddy Jay, Icon de Parfum. This is the discontinued Ferrari Vetiver Essence. So this one opens up very fresh and woody. A little bit of citrus, but not much, but a very fresh woody smell. A little aromatic, not much. Fresh woods, fresh soft woods, and then it settles into a slightly earthy, musky vetiver smell. Um, not super earthy, it's more clean early, and gets a little bit dirtier as it dries, but it is a pretty pleasant vetiver fragrance, and as a lot of you know, I'm not a huge fan of vetiver dominant fragrances. It's gotta be the right scent profile and the right type of vetiver for me, and this one's actually pretty damn good. I have to say, performance surprised me. It's only been the one wearing, but I stopped clocking it around the six hour mark and it was still a decent strength on my skin. So dare I say it's it's gonna be in the, at least the seven hour mark of longevity on my skin. We'll see as further wearings happen in, in the daytime because this was out the shower in the evening before bed, but really enjoying this one so far. It's the discontinued Ferrari Vetiver Essence. Moving into Thursday, this is one that was sent to me by a viewer of the channel, Jake Bates. Shout out to you, Jake, if you happen to see this video. Uh, he had reached out to me on Instagram and asked me if I'd be interested in taking this off his hands. He wanted to send it to a good home, and he knew I was interested in starting to pick up more and more of the Mercedes-Benz Man line. So he sent me his 50 ml of Mercedes-Benz Man Blue. Basically, Mercedes take on Dior Sauvage. It's not the exact same note breakdown, but it will remind you, it does smell like some Ambroxan, even though it's not listed. I think it's the way the lavender comes across. It's got a very sour, juicy, bergamot smelling citrus. There's tonka bean in here that provides a little bit of sweetness. It's a little peppery spice, like it has a strong resemblance to Sauvage. It does smell a little bit cheaper than Sauvage, and I can tell you after first wearing, it does stay on my skin for a pretty long time. The Siage isn't super weak. I don't know if it's super strong projecting so far based on the one round of testing. Um, decent projection I can tell thus far, but the Siage surprised me. I was getting random whiffs several hours in. Uh, I clocked this one at the eight hour mark before I took a shower. So uh, if you can find this one cheap, it's definitely a great, great, a much more affordable way to smell like Sauvage EDT. They kind of hit the nail on the head here. It's pretty much not a one-to-one -one copy, but it's definitely a clone of it for sure. Not inspired by. They they cloned that sucker. <laughs> and, uh, they did a pretty good job. So I'm happy to have this one. I will do a full review uh, in the very near future. Got to get some more wearings in and do some more testing first, obviously. But during the day, was definitely enjoying this one. Thank you for sending it out once again, Jake. Mercedes-Benz Man Blue. And then when I got the shower, it was time for a shave. So I've been, I've been rocking this one a lot lately when I want to shave. I've been grabbing... This is a Haroff Signature Noir Shave Set. This is the Aftershave Splash. And of course, I follow it up with a couple sprays of the fragrance. This has kind of been my go-to Zaharoff fragrance in the evenings here over the last several weeks. Uh, for a little stretch, it was Rosé and Citrine. Here lately, I've been kind of vibing with Noir. You know, the scent profile, it's just got that mysteriously, you know, dark, sweet, slightly resinous and smoky appeal to it. It's a little ambery, nighttime appropriate. That's why it's called Noir. It just kind of works. And when you're rocking the shave set, it's nice to layer the products together. So that's what I did out the shower. It's a Haroff Signature Noir shave set and the fragrance. Moving into Friday, this is another recent acquisition that I did do a full review on not that long ago. I haven't wore it since the review and I was kind of in the mood for it. It's been sitting on my rotation table. This is from Soradora. This is called Gladiator. It's kind of a blue fragrance, kind of in the same vein as Aventus. It's very fruity, but minty. A lot of mint leaf in here. It's beautiful. And because it's so strong on my skin, I'm actually very happy that that's all the atomizer does. It gives you a light spritz. So you can go in a lot of areas because it is a pure parfum. I forgot the exact concentration, but it performs as such. Projection is not astronomically crazy and loud because it wears close to the skin because it's a high oil concentration of quality ingredients, quality oils used here. It's a niche fragrance. Uh, it's a French niche fragrance. And this is one that I was surprised the very first time I smelled it at how much I actually enjoyed this. And the more I started to wear it, the more I fell in love. I absolutely love this fragrance. It's great. It's one of my favorite acquisitions of the year for sure. Uh, performance is stout in longevity and the Siage is A, 
a magnificent scent bubble smell, and B, pretty stout and strong. Stays in a room when you leave a room for a few moments, uh, based on my wife's feedback. This stuff is really, really good. Like I said, in the same vein of Aventus, I would call it maybe 50% similar in scent profile to Aventus. You'll get the vibe of Aventus, but this is much more fresh, minty, and bright overall. There's no, no real heavy darkness. It's not a smoky fragrance. It's not uber musky like Aventus can be sometimes. It's more about the freshness and the mint. This stuff is really good. During the day, it was a pleasure to wear this one once again. This is Soradora Gladiator. And then when I got out the shower, I just featured this in a, you know, past channel favorite fragrance video where I revisited some of the stuff I used to recommend the most at the beginning of the channel. It made me want to wear it. Low Blue Dissy Au Fresh from Issy Miyake. My favorite rosemary fragrance still. I just haven't worn it in a while. It's nice to pull it out while I had it out. I figured I'd wear it. Really good stuff. If you like fresh, spicy greens... Must try if you if you can try it. Uh, these days, it's been discontinued for a long time now. Even though there's still bottles online, I don't know what going rate is these days. I got it for 20 bucks a few years ago. And it's one that, like I said, if you're a fan of fresh spicy greens, this is one you should probably try to get your nose on. It's not the most groundbreaking if you see it for you know 100 bucks don't don't go do that. That's not worth 100 bucks to me. But if you can find this in the sub $50 price point, I would say that's the most I'd be willing to pay for this one. 20 to 30 is ideal, obviously, but I don't know what they're going for these days. This stuff is solid. This is really good. It's my, like I said, it's my favorite rosemary fragrance. It doesn't smell cheap and synthetic. Performance is actually better than you may expect. It just smells pretty damn good. It was nice to revisit this one. It still holds up to this day. I love this stuff. Out the shower, Issey Miyake's Le Bleu Dissy Au Fresh. And finally today on Saturday, um, I don't know why I was in the mood for this one. <laughs> I just was. I was thinking about it the night before. I put it on the rotation table. I said, oh, see if I feel the same way in the morning. And it turns out I did. So I decided to go with Versace Eros Eau de Parfum. I actually had somebody ask me in the center of the day post about the parfum. I still haven't tried the parfum. I would like to at some point. I saw one of Joy's videos. Joy Min, shout out to Joy. Uh, recently, his 10 favorite fragrances right now, I want to say it was a couple days ago. And uh, the parfum was towards the top of the video, the end of the video, which would be the top of the list. And uh, he said it's kind of like the, the more mature take on it. So that intrigues me for sure. A lot of apple, uh, not quite as fresh, a little bit more ambery. So everything he had to say definitely intrigued me, kind of swayed me to where I feel like I need to go ahead and get my, my nose on it. Maybe that's what triggered me to want to smell this. It was a few days ago I saw the video, but it still holds up. I still love this stuff. I still love the way it smells. It's so good. I do like the EDP more than the Eau de Toilette. Yes, the Eau de Toilette is the freshest. It's the loudest. This one kind of balances out to where it's still pretty loud, uh, but it does last a really long time on my skin. This is every bit of like 10 hours on my skin. And the apple's a little richer. The woods are a little warmer. It just suits my taste a little bit more. Until I get my nose on the par Parfum just to see, this is still my favorite version of Eros, and I absolutely enjoyed wearing this one today, for sure. During the day, Versace Eros Eau de Parfum. And then when I got out the shower a little while ago, I actually doused myself in this with like, like 10 sprays. Ferrari Radiant Bergamot. I still love the hell out of this stuff. It's so, so good. Has that little air leak where it loses prime. Um, this is my tester bottle that doesn't have a cap. And then Jay from Icon to Parfum has been sending me all these discontinued Ferrari fragrances. I have a partial backup bottle of this as well with the cap. So I spray this one pretty heavy, heavier than I normally would spray anything out the shower. I do minimum 10 sprays when I spray this one now um, for two reasons. One, I love how it smells so much. I love a strong scent bubble all around me for the little bit of time that it's on my skin for the few hours. And because I have so much of it, and I know this one's going to spoil sooner than the other one because this one has the air leak. That The other bottle does not. I tested it. That one doesn't lose prime. This one loses prime, so it has an air leak. This one will spoil sooner than most of my fragrances. So I try to get as much use as I can out of this. Loving wearing this tonight. It's only been on me for about an hour. It still smells great on me. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Out the shower. Ferrari. Radiant Bergamot. Well, that is week number 146 in the weekly rotation. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. 
what did you guys wear this week? Those of you that are familiar with this format, you know that's my favorite comments of the week to read. This is my fav favorite format to do, um, besides doing blind first impressions. This is my jam. This is my favorite video to record every week, and uh, we're back on schedule for now. I don't have any more traveling coming up for a little till the end, towards the end of the year, so it should be on schedule for every Sunday morning moving forward. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the fragrances I wore this past week and give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys. Mm -hmm.